Good morning, folks. Everything new under the sun. It is May the 29th. We are heading quickly into summer and um, got lots of fun uh, plans for this summer, should the Lord tarry. But with the, the news coming up, it looks like we're getting ever closer to the return of the Lord. And so it's, uh, it's uh, ever increasingly a time to be serious, to be watching for the return of the Lord, to understand what's happening in the world, because it's going to affect Christians prior to the rapture event. Whenever you understand that that's going to happen, uh, I think all of us would agree that that's going to happen at some point. The elect will be taken out of this world, whether it's before the tribulation or after the tribulation, the elect will be taken out. So it's important for us to understand, to be watchmen, to um, long for the coming of the Lord. Um, and there was a passage in Hebrews um, that I read about uh, that the Lord is going to come to take those who are watching uh, for him, for his return. I would like to start off with scriptures because that's always a great place to start. And that's a discussion point in the comments. Um, does the Antichrist enforce a peace plan? Does he confirm a peace plan? Does he uh, put it forward? Is it, is it the first person who comes up with a peace plan? Is it Kushner or Trump um, that <clears throat> is described as the Antichrist? Well, this is from BibleGateway.com, the KJV. Verse 27 says, And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. In the midst of the week he shall cause a sacrifice and oblation to cease, it says. Let me go into, we'll go into reader mode here. Um, and in the midst of the week he uh, shall cause a sacrifice and oblation to, to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And, the, and the, that determined shall be poured out <clears throat> desolate. Now, the key words here are, of course, he, um, speaking of the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant. So there's some agreement, that being the covenant, cov uh, covenant um, some uh, process of requirements, some, uh, something on paper that says this is how it's going to work. But the word there that at least the KJV uses is to confirm. And when it says confirm, does that mean uh, enforce? Is part of the confirming the enforcement? Uh, is it simply a piece of paper um, that they say, yes, we're going to go ahead with this one? And I suspect that there's, a, there's a couple of different meanings there. I suspect it's going to be effectively um, a confirmation by way of saying, yes, we're going to go ahead with this uh, agreement that was on the table already. Confirm certainly doesn't mean to create a new uh, <clears throat> peace deal, although, I mean, or a peace uh, agreement, although um, there could be that uh, meaning there as well. Um, but it says confirm. And so I, I kind of think there's going to be some side of it that is also um, an enforcement, <clears throat> a pushing through of, if you will, maybe not an enforcement, but a pushing upon the different parties saying, look, we're going to abide by this, uh, and this is the peace plan that we're going to go with. So that's what the scriptures say. Daniel 9, 27, he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. So we're going to talk about the peace plan and um, the latest revelations about that. And it's up in the air because of the elections uh, now in uh, Israel. And a window keeps popping up on my screen, which you probably can't see, but it's uh, getting in my way. Okay, now the first article I want to take a look at is jpos.com. German Intel, Iran wants to expand weapons of mass destruction. We're not going to take a long time on this, but uh, this is kind of the the whole rhetoric going on in behind um, the uh, Jerusalem, the uh, Israeli elections, and, and the prospect um, uh, for new elections in September. There's still a massive buildup in Iran. Uh, U.S. is now sending, I think it's 2,500 troops over. Uh, that's the latest that they agreed to, um, as far as I understand. They have uh, sh uh, they have air aircraft um, and, and ships there already. And so what is the intel saying? Well, it's saying uh, Iran was termed a risk country in the 335-page document outlining serious threats to security and democracy uh, in, in the state of Bavaria. The Islamic Republic of Iran is committed to uh, a program of weapons of mass destruction. The Domestic, domestic Intelligence Agency uh, for the southern German state of Bavaria said in its 2019 uh, intelligence report. The hair-raising section of the report reviewed by Jerusalem Post states that 
The regime is making efforts to expand its conventional arsenal of weapons with weapons of mass destruction. So you have in intelligence, uh, again, speaking of weapons of mass destruction, what was the uh, the cause, the trigger point, the, the reason behind um, uh, the, uh, the Iraq invasion? Well, it was the whole idea of weapons of mass destruction back in the Saddam Hussein uh, days. And so they appear to be bringing up this, uh, these words again, weapons of mass destruction. Uh, and, and it's timely, of course, because we have a complete and total military buildup uh, all around uh, Iran right now. And uh, Israel's not really s uh, speaking too much uh, about the current buildup around uh, Iran and what their part in this would be and whether there is going to be any strike, but uh, there's certainly a buildup now. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta uh, understand that uh, Israel's not speaking of it right now because they're they're busy with the elections. They're trying to get the elections over and done with, and, and they they hope that it would be, have been done by now that a coalition government would be in place. And this also plays in um, to the peace plan between the uh, Israelis and the Palestinians. Now, much of the world believes that if you bring peace to the uh, Middle East, to the Israeli uh, uh, Israel and the Palestinians, um, that that will usher in peace for the world, and, and that's part of the hope, and that's part of why the Antichrist um, confirms a covenant uh, in the Middle East, because there is hope there by the whole world, and pressure upon the Middle East by the whole world, and through this Antichrist figure, uh, for there to be peace between Israel and, Pal and the Palestinians. Let's get to some of the, uh, the peace plan news, Ynet news, Trump team to meet leaders of Israel, Jordan, as it sells, Mideast peace plan. So this is still going ahead, even though um, Israel looks to be heading towards uh, a, a new set of elections in September. The White House, White House is still promoting June 25th, 26th meeting uh, in the Gulf state of Bahrain, Bahrain rather, as the first play, uh, phase of his long-awaited peace plan, uh, which envisages large-scale investments. So a large part of the peace plan is money. Investment, uh, making the lives of the Palestinians better, as if they're trying to convince the public, uh, you know, the Palestinian public, civilians, that this is a good peace plan. It's not the citizens uh, of uh, Palestinian Authority, uh, of the Palestinians, rather, that they need to convince. It's the Palestinian Authority, the government, and the government doesn't want uh, investment. They, they want money for themselves, sure, but um, ultimately they want the destruction of Israel, and I think that's going to be a, a part where this peace plan falls down. But this is what they're pushing for. American officials say the Bahrain Conference will not include the core political issues of the conflict, so this, this is just a purely monetary um, investment uh, uh, meeting that they're have, having in Bahrain. Um, the status, it doesn't include the status of Jerusalem, Will there be a dividing of Jerusalem? And then, of course, that's a big deal in, in scriptures. Or the fate of the Palestinian refugees or Israeli security demand. So it seems like they're going to test the waters and go in there. White House officials said this, the trip with stops in Morocco, Jordan, Israel, and Europe is part of ongoing efforts to achieve peace. The Palestinians will not be attending the Bahrain meeting, rejecting the parameters of the conference, while key American allies, Egypt and Jordan, have not announced their plans for participation. So they've got a long way to go uh, in terms of convincing people to go ahead with this. Here's uh, an article from Al Jazeera. Kushner heads to Middle East to seek support for U.S. peace plans. So this is 17 hours ago. Kushner is going to the Middle East regardless of this current situation uh, related to the government in Israel. Remember, they had delayed the peace plan because they were waiting for the elections to occur. Now that's up in the air again. So what's going to happen? Kushner is leading a delegation to the Middle East, signaling a new push in a long-promised peace plan. Kushner is accompanied by uh, Greenblatt. The uh, delegation is be going to begin its trip uh, in the Moroccan capital of Rabat. Uh, it goes on, um, the proposal, touted as the deal of the century, is set to encourage investment. And so there, it's all about investment, money. Um, is money going to convince the Palestinians and the Palestinian Authority to go ahead with this investment in the occupied West Bank and the Gaza Strip? Of course, this is Al Jazeera, anti-Israel uh, uh, news organization, um, by Arab donors before dealing with major political issues at heart. So they're not going after the political issues. Where they're going to they're going to start it with money. They're going to see uh, what uh, the temperature of the Middle East is for uh, this peace deal. So when are we going to hear? the real nuts and bolts of 
the peace plan. And this is this is what we don't have a date on yet. We have a soft start, if you will, um, in Bahrain, and then hopefully shortly after that, the the rest is going to come out. But we don't know yet. We don't have a date when the when the political side of this agreement is going to come out. I think they're going to schedule that based on um, the reception uh, of the the investment uh, conference in Bahrain. What else is happening here? Well, China and Russia are going to boycott the Bahrain conference. So you're not even going to have these two big players there, which are going to be the big backers um, and large part of Ezekiel 38. Um, interesting that they are not part of this uh, peace um, summit, at least the first part of the uh, economic workshops in Manama. Senior Palestinian Liberation Organization and Palestinian Authority official Saeed Arakat on Monday said he had been informed by China and Russia that they will not participate in the upcoming uh, U.S.-led economic workshop um, uh, in the capital of uh, in the capital of Bahrain, Manama. Arakat said the PA had asked both countries to boycott the economic conference. The Chinese envoy to the PA confirmed the remarks, noted that a tripartite agreement had been reached with Syria to boycott. The conference. So it's not going so well yet. Um, and, and we're going to see how uh, Kushner Greenblatt deal with this, how Trump deals with this. The boycotting of um, kind of the big other superpowers of the world, if you will, uh, currently. Um, and it's interesting, again, um, that uh, Russia is a part of uh, one of the countries, the, the leader country in the Ezekiel 38 uh, and 39 war. And they're not on board uh, with any of these this peace agreement, with any of this peace push. If they were, maybe they wouldn't uh, go against Israel uh, in this battle if they were on board with it. So something interesting. Why not news? Neset mulls bill to dissolve uh, for elections with time running out to form coalition government. And this this is significant. Clock is ticking for Netanyahu on midnight deadline uh, to present the new government. Likud blames Lieberman. Avigor Lieberman, he is still holding out. Um, and he does not want to help uh, Netanyahu form a coalition. Uh, with just hours to go before Netanyahu runs out of time, literally runs out of time to form a coalition, the Nesset began discuss discussions Wednesday at noon on a bill to dissolve Parliament and head to a second round of national elections this year. And so those elections would be held uh, in September. So this is, again, this is the whole timing part. Um, stuff doesn't happen um, in, in the timing that we think they should happen. Stuff doesn't happen... Um, on our timeline, God has a certain timeline for Bible prophecy be, to be fulfilled, and all is going at the right pacing and timing according to what he has set out and what he knows is going to happen. And so uh, could this all, could the peace deal all push to the September time frame? And uh, again, we have we are moving to <clears throat> towards the 2021 um timeline, which I think uh, is the timeline of uh, the start of the seven-year period. And so we still have a year and a half uh, to go, you know, a, a good amount of time for all these things to happen. And I think when they start when they start happening, they're going to happen quite quickly. Political sources said Netanyahu was seeking agreement with the leaders of the parties of the legislature uh, for a mid-September election day. Again, if, if elections are required uh, for the peace plan to really be fulfilled and the, the final status agreement of Jerusalem to be revealed, that part of the peace plan, are they going to uh, then again put it off and say, well, we're not going to reveal the political side of the peace plan until after the September elections. So that's interesting. Another significant delay. Uh, what's that going to mean for it? And, and the fact that, uh, again, the 70 shepherds of Israel is still a prophecy from the book of Enoch, uh, from one Enoch, which is still at play. If they put it off, um, will there be an interim leader? Um, the, the 70 shepherds of Israel would be debunked if there was an interim leader. Netanyahu has to hold power throughout this, and I kind of suspect that he will. Um, and uh, we're going to see. Is he going to get a new term confirmed in, in September for another four years? And if he got a new term in September, boy, that would be close to, uh, and, and he completed his four-year term, that would be uh, close to uh, really confirming um, that the 70 Shepherds of Enoch uh, was something that wasn't accurate and trustworthy uh, prophecy. So uh, we're going to see how that turns out. Certainly at this point in time, it's all up in the air. And again, you look at the prophecies that God has, and the odds are stacked against 
the prophecies. And I think that's the way God likes it because that means you and I can't say, well, that was obvious. Anybody could tell that was going to happen. And I think with these elections uh, being put off, the coalition government not going through, the peace plan uh, now potentially up in the air. We have no idea when the political part of the peace plan is going to come out. And this is this is part of uh, God saying, you know what? You guys have no idea what's in store, and I'm going to keep you guys guessing uh, because that will further verify that the prophecy was accurate when it does, uh, when it is fulfilled, when it does come to fulfillment, when it is confirmed, um, that it was um, truly a prophecy um, inspired. Uh, by God. Now, it's extra biblical, the pro prophecy of the 70 shepherds, uh, but again, uh, it, it's spoken highly of uh, in the Bible. Um, uh, Enoch, uh, a big, uh, significant uh, player in the book of Genesis. So, these are interesting times that we live in, and I think, uh, I think we're going to see over the coming months uh, this come together, but it may come together more slowly than we would all like. But that is a current update on the peace plan, the situation in the Middle East, uh, as as is happening right now, guys. Thanks for watching. Please hit the bell icon if you haven't yet. That will uh, ensure that you're notified of all the upcoming build videos. And thanks for supporting the channel. And uh, hit the like button as well. And we'll see you guys in the next video.